Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about pointers. So this is part one of pointers, basic pointers is what we're going to talk about. So what are pointers? Pointers in C++ is a data type, like any other data type, int, float, double, so on and so forth. Ints store whole numbers, you know that, floats and doubles store real numbers, char stores a single character, Pointers hold the memory address of a cell, okay? So a pointer variable is a variable whose content is an address. How do you declare it? You int star ptr says you're declaring a pointer. ptr is just the name of the pointer. You can call whatever you want. It points to an integer. So the pointer variable is said to point to that memory location that it is essentially addressing, okay? Char ch asterisk ch says ch will point to a char data type. The asterisk can appear anywhere between these two. It can appear next to the data type or next to the variable, okay? So a pointer is declared with an asterisk next to it. Here are some valid pointer declarations. Int ptr, star ptr says ptr is a pointer that will point to an integer memory location. ch, uh, star ch says ch is a pointer that points to a char data type. You can also write it in these formats, right, with the star in between or next to the data type and so on and so forth. But they are both pointing, one is pointing to an integer, the other is pointing to a char variable. Here are some more nuances of pointers. Int star ptr num. Num is just a regular pointer. Notice there's no asterisk in front of it. If there's an asterisk, it's a pointer. Otherwise, it's a regular variable. So star ptr, ptr is the only pointer. Num is a regular integer. If you put an asterisk before both of them, then they are both pointer variables. So pay attention to some of these things. Once we know pointers, then we must also know what the address of operator is. The ampersand sign is called the address of operator. It returns the address of the operand. You have used this for reference parameters. If you think about it, when you pass by a reference, you have to put an ampersand sign in front of it to say that we are passing by reference. So if you do int x equals 5, a regular integer, your output ampersand sign x will print the address of x. And this is something you must try. The more you try these kind of things, the more you'll figure out what your program does. Here are some ways to declare variables and allocate memory and so on and so forth. Int num is a regular integer. And remember, if you don't initialize it, it's going to have a large negative number. This is its address, 0x1200. Int star ptr is the name of a pointer. It is not pointing to anything. It has its own address. Question mark says it's not pointing to anything because we haven't assigned anything. Just like num doesn't have a value, it puts a random number in there. Okay. Now putting it all together, ptr equals and num. ptr is a pointer. It can only hold an address. So you have to give it an address. Okay. So if you say ampersand sign num, it takes the address of num, which is 1200, and puts it into this value, and so now ptr is pointing to num. Num still doesn't have anything, but ptr has something, and it's pointing to num. Now I can access num in two different ways. I can access num through num or through ptr. How do we do that? So then we have the dereferencing operator. This asterisk, even though it's an asterisk, which is the same as when you declare the pointer, it's different when you use it in a statement as a dereferencing operator. So this, on the second line, declares a pointer. The third line assigns the address of num to ptr. So num has a value of 100. It has an address of 1200. When you say ptr equals and num, 1200 goes into ptr. ptr points to num. And the way to access num through ptr is to put an asterisk in front of it. So C out asterisk ptr will print 100. C out num will also print 100. Now, how do you change the value of num through ptr? Asterisk ptr equals 55 assigns the value of 55 to num, which is the same as saying num equals 55. So if you say num equals 66 after that, that will assign the value of 66 to num. So essentially, we are changing num through ptr or through num. C out num will print 55. C out asterisk ptr will print 55. Now, C out asterisk num will give you an error message because num is not a ptr. Num is not a pointer. ptr is a pointer. Okay, so take a minute to think about these things. 
few things to note about pointers. Once you start with pointers, there are lots of chances for errors. You have to be very careful with pointers. In star PTR, declares a pointer. There's nothing in it. So if you try to output star PTR, it's going to crash because PTR is not pointing to anything yet. So we must make sure PTR is pointing to something as shown here. Int num equals five. PTR equals and num says PTR is now pointing to num. And then if you do see how it's star PTR is gonna print five because we have dereferenced PTR using the asterisk operator. Few more things. In star PTR, int num equals five, PTR equals and num. Note you use the asterisk when declaring a pointer. Then for dereferencing, you use it, but then when you're assigning a value after you have declared it, you don't put the PTR in front of it unless you know you want to print it or you want to do something with its value. So the assignment of the pointer to the address simply says PTR equals and num. So write some code like this. Okay, I don't have homework on this for you. Homework comes from the next part, but these are basic pointers and you should write this code. Write this in Replit, write this in this on the server, it doesn't matter. Int star PTR declares a pointer. Int num equals 100 declares a regular variable. PTR equals and num takes the value of the address of num and puts it into PTR. So now PTR is pointing to num. And then write some cout statements. Cout num, num is 100, that's what we have. See out ampersand num will print the address of num. And you should see an address like this or a longer one if you have a 64 bit computer. See out star PTR will print the value of PTR that it's pointing to, which is 100. Value of PTR will print the address of num, which is the same as address of num. Because PTR, remember, we said PTR equals and num. So the value that's in PTR, not what is pointing to. PTR itself has a value and that is the address, which is the same as this address. And PTR will print its own address. It has an address of its own, right? So go back to the previous slides and think about it. When a pointer is declared, the pointer variable holds an unknown address until the pointer is initialized. You may initialize a pointer to nothing or empty and that nothing is null PTR or null, all uppercase actually, this null will not work, that's not right. Null PTR, all lowercase, or null, all uppercase, means nothing. So that's really what you want to set it to. So this gets, it's like saying int num equals zero. You initialize number to zero, okay? Check pointers before you do anything. Do not just assume there is something in there. In star val PTR or val pointer equals null PTR. If value pointer equals null PTR, see out pointer is null. Else, see out the value of it. So don't try, don't try to just output a value thinking it might have something. We are going to be using a lot of this in project four and in the next couple of videos and in your homeworks that you're going to be doing. Here are some syntax errors. Int sum int is just a number, any int sum integer. Int star val pointer is a pointer. Val pointer asterisk val pointer equals and sum int is wrong because you're dereferencing this and trying to put an address in it. When you dereference it, it's not first of all pointing to anything. That would be a problem. The second problem is that you're trying to put an address into an int. So that can't be true either. So you remove the asterisk and you make this point to some int. Then you see out star val pointer. So just try to understand what all these different operators are actually doing. The ampersand sign is the address of operator that gets the address and puts it into a pointer. When you put the asterisk in front of it, you're dereferencing the pointer to get the value of whoever it is pointing to. Here are some more syntax errors that can happen. Val pointer one is a pointer. Val pointer two is not a pointer. Notice there's no asterisk in front of it. Val pointer one equals null PTR. Val pointer two equals null PTR will give you an error message. Int cannot be assigned null PTR. Int star val pointer one, int star val pointer two, or do it this way. This is how you need to initialize or declare pointers. Runtime errors are errors that you get when you run the program. They are not compile errors, but when you run the program, you will get errors. Here are some runtime errors that can happen. In star val pointer, you're declaring a val pointer and you're trying to put a value in it. Is it pointing to something first? No. So this would be wrong. You're dereferencing without making it pointing to something. So val pointer is not pointing to anything. 
So declare a variable, make val pointer point to it, then dereference it. This is one way to do it. Here are some more runtime errors. In star val pointer equals null PTR. Again, this is something we saw on the previous slide. You can't do this because you're trying to dereference something that doesn't exist. So create an int, put an address in it, and then dereference it. So here, let's take a look at some demo code that I have here. Okay, so if you look here, this is just the same thing that we saw. We are just a main file, int x equals zero, another x equals zero, two variables, double y equals zero. We create two pointers, xptr, set it equal to null, all uppercase notice pointing to an integer, yptr pointing to a double, all set to null, xptr equals and x, yptr equals and y, make them point to x and y first, xptr equals asterisk xptr equals 15, I'm putting a value in x, I'm putting a value in y, and then output some of them, x ampersand x is the address of x, output y, ampersand y is the address of y, output the values of xptr and yptr by putting an asterisk in front of it, I put the addresses that are in there. And then finally, I'm changing some values through XPTR. Asterisk XPTR equals 20 changes the value from 15 to 20. And I will put it. Okay. So take a look. G plus. Or I do have a G plus basic PTRs. Run basic PTRs. And you notice you have all these addresses that show up. So AND X and AND Y are different addresses, but XPTR and XYPTR should point to the address of X and Y. If you notice, XPTR is 70Z or 70C, and YPTR is 700, the last three uh, characters. And XPTR and YPTR themselves have different addresses. So take a look at this. Make sure you understand the asterisks and the ampersand and see what they all do. And I will see you in part two.